Have you at any point investigated whether we're genuinely alone in the universe? On the other hand, tolerating that there's something else to our world other than whatever we see, envision what's going on if the James Webb Telescope finally shows that we live inside a dark opening. It could oblige us as we sort out more about this critical news that will make you question all that you thought you had some awareness of the universe. So, what exactly are dark openings? They're like something out of a shocking dream. Sure, you might have seen them in science fiction movies and films, however, amazingly, they're truly startling. They're not only that. As shown by specialists, dark openings in space are remembered to contain immense measures of mass fit into an especially little region. Consider a star generally more significant than the sun, all got into a circle the size of New York City. The gravitational post is so solid that nothing, not even light, can escape from it. Specialists have been dazzled by dark openings for a long time. Since then, they've studied objects in space that are so gigantic and thick that they can trap light. The most outstanding ideas regarding dark openings were predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity. Essentially, M-theorist Michio Kaku explains dark openings when a monstrous star breaks down. It leaves a thick center. If the mass of this center is a couple of times that of the sun, gravity overwhelms everything, prompting the formation of a dark opening. It's no simple errand to identify dark openings since they don't radiate light. How, anyway, have specialists tracked down approaches to derive their presence? By noticing their consequences for adjacent matter. For instance, if a dark opening goes through a haze of interstellar matter, it will pull that matter toward it in a cycle called growth. Besides, when an ordinary star gets excessively near a dark opening, it can get obliterated, radiating X-rays as it does so. Dark openings likewise enormously impact their environmental elements. They can consume nearby stars, discharge strong radiation, and even influence the development of new stars in specific districts while dialing it back in others. But where do dark openings come from? Imagine stars, once huge and strong, gathering their savage end in a stunning occasion known as a cosmic explosion. From the remaining parts of these fallen giants, dark openings arise. Most dark openings are brought into the world from gigantic stars that have reached their heavenly retirement party in a cosmic explosion blast. More modest stars, when they die, transform into what many refer to as neutron stars, which are amazingly thick, but not sufficiently thick to trap light. However, if a star is a few times the mass of our sun, it falls under its own gravitational power, forming a dark opening. As these breakdowns happen, something odd happens close to their surfaces. Time itself starts to play tricks. From the point of view of somebody far away, time appears to dial back close to the event horizon, the last limit for anything falling into a dark opening. Maybe the star's clock ticks at a different speed compared to our own. Occasionally, when two smaller dark openings collide, they converge to form a much bigger and more terrifying dark opening. And if a dark opening collaborates with a neutron star, they make a huge nightmare that defies understanding. Researchers have been grappling with the size of these tremendous phenomena for a long time. Dark openings come in two sizes, enormous and small. There's a mysterious secret surrounding them that we can't exactly disentangle. Anyway, here is the trick. Small is relative when it comes to very dark openings. Massive dark openings, the leftovers of giant stars, can be as extensive as 10 to 100 times the size of the sun. There could be upwards of 10 million to a billion of them in the Milky Way alone. Event horizons, the doorway to the unexplored world. That is a stunning number of dark openings that could swallow anything in their way. However, wait, there's something considerably more epic. Very huge dark openings are on the furthest end of the range. They are millions, if not billions, of times greater than the sun. They exist at the focal point of enormous cosmic systems, including our own Milky Way. It resembles an enormous dead space pulling everything toward it. Famous physicist Stephen Hawking talked about dark openings throughout his life. His discussions were continuously enthralling, yet a portion of his speculations couldn't be confirmed due to a lack of essential gear. However, there's hope not too far away. A single scientific instrument is having an enormous effect, and we're not ready for it. It's called the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, 
and it's here to jump into the profundities of our universe. Let me tell you, the JWST is no common telescope. It's an engineering miracle, a demonstration of the power of human creativity. Sure, we've sent off other space telescopes before, and they've gone about their jobs competently, but this force to be reckoned with is truly exceptional. The JWST makes the Hubble Space Telescope, which has served us for many years, appear to be an essential speck in the universe. The sticker price for this cosmic wonder is a staggering 10 billion. Yes, you heard that right. That is enough zeros to take your breath away. Get this. It took the combined efforts of NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency to bring this wonder to life, alongside significant contributions from more than 300 universities. But we mustn't disregard the dangers that come with such an ambitious project. I know this isn't an adventure for the timid. The JWST is wandering into a strange area, stretching the boundaries of what we know and taking us to places we've only imagined. After a successful launch, NASA recently announced that the telescope has enough fuel to last more than twice its initial mission life. Since its launch, the JWST has accomplished several stunning feats, traveling over one million miles to reach its orbit around the Sun, where it will remain perpetually during its mission. The telescope successfully deployed its enormous five-layer sunshield and giant primary mirror, both of which had to be folded to fit inside the launch vehicle. Now, after NASA has changed and aligned it, the telescope is practically ready for full operation. One of the most enthralling parts of the JWST was when NASA announced that it had captured its first images of starlight. The first image taken by the telescope was of a star called HD 8446, resulting in a mosaic of 18 dispersed brilliant spots from the starlight captured by the 18 mirror fragments on the primary mirror. NASA later released another stunning image of HD 8446, in which the 18 unfocused duplicates of the star were joined into an intentional hexagonal pattern once the telescope fully aligned itself. The observatory successfully changes the individual sections of the essential reflect. It will start the course of stacking pictures, mixing 18 pictures into one clear view. Thanks to its cutting-edge innovation, the JWST will assist analysts with concentrating on the beginning phases of the universe after the Big Bang. It will zero in on what happened after the first stars formed, in a period known as the Epoch of Reionization. This refers to the point when neutral hydrogen was reionized, made to have an electric charge again, by radiation from these first stars. This includes looking back billions of years, which is only possible with a strong telescope like the JWST. The telescope will also help in finding exoplanets, which are exceptionally difficult to recognize because of how they interact with their host stars. Its strong sensors will be capable of noticing these planets in more detail, at times even imaging their environments. Figuring out the conditions and states of these planets could help researchers predict whether certain planets are tenable or not. Additionally, in focusing on the formation of planets, scientists are concentrating on universes to understand how matter is organized on a large scale. This, in turn, helps us see how the universe evolved and how the bending and twisted galaxies we see today formed from various shapes over billions of years. One of the JWST's goals is to look back at the earliest galaxies to better understand their development. Researchers are also working to understand how we got the range of galaxies that are visible today and how galaxies continue to form and evolve. However, above all, the James Webb Space Telescope will assist us with answering the biggest questions of all. Are we alone in the universe, and are we living inside a black hole? The JWST has already been on the hunt, and guess what it found? Compounds called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs, hiding around huge, extremely large black holes in three dynamic galaxies. These carbon-based molecules with ring-like designs are the goth children of the universe. They're everywhere, from distant galaxies to comets, and even in our own solar system. Now, they're not just fascinating because they could be the building blocks of life, but also because they help astronomers follow star development. When ultraviolet radiation hits these PAHs, they sparkle and emit infrared light, a signal that can be detected by the JWST's mid-infrared instrument, MIRI. This is often a sign that there are some hot, young stars nearby. But wait for the twist. An astrophysicist named Ismael Garcia Bernard from Oxford University decided to study three dynamic galaxies. NGC 6550, 
in GC 70319, in the famous Stefan's Quintet, found a huge number of light years away in the depths of darkness. What Garcia Bernard found will make your hair stand on end. In the central areas where the black holes dominate, he found a lot of PAHs. Sounds interesting, right? Well, here's where it gets chilling. The radiation close to those huge black holes twisted the PAHs, essentially turning them into larger, electrically neutral forms of themselves. The small, electrically charged PAHs vanished into the deep darkness. Imagine being consumed by the very darkness itself. But wait, there's a hopeful sign. Or perhaps not. The real question here isn't whether we're alive, but whether we truly exist. Does everything around us exist because of the black hole we're in? Everything seems to align with the theory that maybe we're not just living inside a black hole, but instead inside the event horizon, a boundary between the universe we know and the unexplored world. Might it be that everything is connected inside a black hole? The James Webb Space Telescope is out there right now, looking for the answers to the unexplored world. Stay tuned, and maybe it will make us all rethink what we thought we knew about existence. Reality might be far more bent than we realize. In the captivating universe of cosmology, few subjects have generated as much interest and mystery as black holes. These titanic entities, with their ability to bend space-time and consume everything in their vicinity, have long been the subject of both scientific study and popular imagination. The statement that we finally found what's inside a black hole, made by famous physicist Michio Kaku, plays on the wonder and curiosity surrounding these enigmatic objects. But what does this bold claim mean? Has science finally unlocked the mysteries of what lies within the event horizon of a black hole? To grasp Kaku's statement, we need to take a step back and examine the concept of black holes, the current state of research, and the significance of the latest discoveries in the field. A black hole is a region in space where the gravitational pull is so strong that not even light can escape. This phenomenon is the result of a massive star collapsing under its own gravity after it has exhausted its nuclear fuel. When this happens, the star's core contracts, and if the mass is sufficient, it forms a singularity a point of infinite density where the laws of physics as we know them break down. It is the event horizon that surrounds this singularity. The event horizon is the limit beyond which nothing can escape, not even light. For years, the existence of black holes was purely theoretical. The concept first arose from Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. However, it wasn't until the 1960s and 1970s that researchers like John Wheeler, Roger Penrose, and Stephen Hawking began to develop the mathematical framework that would bring black holes into the realm of accepted science. Despite this theoretical understanding, black holes remained a subject of mystery and speculation. What happens beyond the event horizon? Is it possible to peer inside a black hole, or is it truly inaccessible? The event horizon of a black hole represents a boundary beyond which there is no return. It is often described as a point of no escape. When something crosses this threshold, it is inexorably drawn toward the singularity at the center of the black hole, where it is crushed to infinite density. Despite their significance in the black hole model, the event horizon is not something we can directly observe. The very nature of a black hole means that light cannot escape its gravitational pull, making the study of what lies beyond the event horizon extremely challenging. For many years, Black holes were thought of as vast prisons where information about the objects falling into them would be lost forever. This idea was encapsulated by the so-called information paradox, which emerged from the work of Stephen Hawking in the 1970s. Hawking suggested that black holes could slowly evaporate due to a process known as Hawking radiation, a quantum phenomenon that suggests black holes gradually lose mass over time. If this radiation carried away all the information about what had fallen into the black hole, it would violate a fundamental principle of quantum mechanics known as unitarity, which states that information should be preserved. This paradox sparked decades of debate. 